guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and this week I'm going to update you on the bins. Now you may have guessed from the title that things didn't go exactly as I planned. So this summer was a little bit different than usual. It was pretty hot and we had no rain, like none. So I was having to top off my bins all summer. And this actually worked out pretty well for me when it came time to move the fish in because my parameters outside were not very far off from my parameters inside. However, the other weird thing that happened is we were having mid-80s weather with mid-60s overnight pretty consistently until about three days ago where out of nowhere it dropped to 50s during the day and 40s overnight. So needless to say, I had to break down the bins in a hurry. So I don't have any footage for you because we also got the first rain that we had in two months. Um, because it got so cold, I lost a lot of fry and it really broke my heart because every bin had tons. But you win some, you lose some. And what I did bring in looks phenomenal and is already acclimated back to, tan back to my tap and I'll show you that here shortly. Um, also next week or sometime soon, maybe as a bonus video, I'll show you guys how I winterize my plants and the final breakdown of the bins. Of course, it's raining again today, so I can't show you the aftermath of collecting the fish in a hurry. But it was about seven hours of hard labor in the rain to get all the fish in, and I just barely got them in in time. Uh, I think if I would have collected about a week ago, when things were still hot enough for them to be out there, I would have had a much bigger yield to show you guys. But anyway, let's take a look and I'll tell you a little bit about what I brought in and the results that I got. And then uh, in the next week or so, I will show you guys how I winterize my lilies and what I do with my other plants. Some I've already moved in, so I'll show you that today. One of the fish that I worked with outside were CPDs, Celestial Pearl Danios or Celestictes margaritatis. Um, I had them in a bin with Danny Ochopre. The Chopre, I lost all the fry. The CPDs, I managed to move in, uh, I'd say about 70 of them. And you can see how good the color is on, on the males that came back inside. You know, I have a feeling if I would have gotten to harvest these at an appropriate time, I would have had several hundred, but Fry just don't do well with those temperature switch, um, temperature swings, and yeah, I really, really was bummed out that I didn't get more of these, but they are one that historically does very well. There's a fry. Very well for me outside, so I will absolutely try them again next year. Look at that male. You can see all sizes. They did, they did pretty well. These are the long, thin white clouds. Now I pulled some of them in the middle of the season, about 50 of them to sell. So I think I moved in about 30 this past weekend. You can see some of the, the sub-adults here, how nice their finage is. And you can see some of the juveniles as well in there. And they are one of the best ones to move outside. And again, if I would have brought them in a little earlier, I would have had a lot more to show you. Even two weeks ago, I saw hundreds of fry, but I think I lost all the little teeny tinies with the dramatic cold snap that we had. But I still managed to save quite a few in order to preserve the line and be able to sell some. Look at those fins, holy cow. And that's what breeding outside does for them. Really beautiful. You can see even at a small size, that one at the top there is starting to get really nice fins. Now the fish that I got the biggest yield from were these Microdivaria nanus, and that's probably because I had them in a 300 gallon bin, and the temperature in that one stayed a lot more stable than in my smaller bins. As you can see, there are quite a few fish in this tank, and from being outside, the microdivario got a really awesome yellow color. And that black dorsal, just really beautiful fish, even the little tiny babies. 
have that good coloration. Now, pardon all the mom, but these mom, but these guys are still being acclimated to the indoors. So, over the next week or so, I will work on removing all that mom and getting them back into my straight tap water. But these guys, there's probably 400 or so in this tank. They did really well. These are the Rainbow Shiner Juveniles I got. They're about two inches. I only managed to get 12. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy. It's enough to perpetuate my line and possibly sell a few. And say, so despite them being young fish, their color's really good. I moved out a pair of clown killies. You can see the male in the center of the screen there. Unfortunately, this bin was hit one of the hardest. Um, it, was in, it was the most shaded bin. I only managed to save 12 fish. I lost all the Danny Anella that were out there and was only able to save the 12 largest clown killies. So that was kind of a bummer. But the 12 that I saved are absolutely gorgeous. I just really regret not getting it done sooner. I was trying to make sure that I would be able to film for you guys and it kind of bit me in the butt. And I didn't even get to film for you anyway, but look at that male. Holy mackerel. He's really beautiful. These are the chilies I moved in from outside. I ended up with about a hundred. These guys are about a quarter of an inch, so they'll need so they'll need a few weeks inside to grow, maybe even a month before I offer them for sale. But I was really pretty shocked at the yield I got from these guys. I didn't expect it. Um, they did surprisingly well. And their, their color will only intensify as they put on some size. And I will definitely try these again next year. Now I'll talk about this more in next week's video. But a lot of the plants that I grow outside especially floaters I don't tend to try and preserve and that's because they they just are really inexpensive and they grow and multiply so fast throughout the season that there's not really a great benefit to keeping them inside but this sensitive fern I just absolutely love it's the coolest thing and it flowered for me this year so I'm gonna see how it does under this high output light to be overwintered so I can start with it early in the season next year. I also saved some of this plant that I don't even remember what it is. It's kind of a hot mess looking in there, but it did really cool things in the bins. So I'm going to see if I can keep it alive until next year to work with it again. Thanks for watching and thank you for the continued donations and support. As always, don't forget to stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, let me know below.